Hey guys, welcome back. Today I am going to present a new sensor, a new digital sensor that is BMG160. To have a more knowledge, a more insight for this sensor, let's have a look over the website that is controlleverything.com and here we have to search for this sensor that is BMG160. Now let's see what we got for this sensor. So this is a 16-bit tri-axial gyroscope sensor and the range as you can see from 125 to plus minus 2000 degrees per second. Now these are some of its small features and you can also add to cart or you can purchase this sensor from this website. Now I'm going to interface the sensor BMG160 gyroscope sensor with a Raspberry Pi and a Python code and for that let's go to resource and here we have the required python code sample now we can have the code downloaded from this website as a zip file like here and we can also have the opportunity to download the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community now we need to collect some hardware products for which we need to assemble and make some connections for this video tutorial along with the sensor let's go ahead now this here is our sensor that is 16-bit gyroscope sensor BMG160. Now this here is our Raspberry Pi. These are the GPI pins of the Pi. Now to make a connection among the sensor and the Raspberry Pi and to connect other I2C devices and make this connection a lot easier, an I2C shield is required which you can see on my screen. This here is available on our website controleverything.com. Now place this I2C shield over the GPI pins of the Pi and make this connection. Uh, now the binding factor to make a connection among the sensor and the I2C shield is this a connecting cable. Make the connection uh, among the sensor and the cable and while making this connection make sure that the brown wire of the cable should be connected to the ground terminal of the sensor and similarly we have to follow this rule for I2C shield. Now we need to power up our Raspberry Pi and for that a micro SB cable comes into the picture. Gently insert it over the power jack. Now the last thing we need is to make a connection, internet connection with the Raspberry Pi for the working of the sensor. For that we have two ways. First of all an ethernet cable can be used. Uh, gently push over the ethernet jack. In case if we don't have the ethernet cable we can also use a nano USB wireless adapter which is a uh, lot easier and it might save your day for the internet connection. Now as we are done with the connections part what we need is a code so that we can interface the sensor with that. So why not we have a look over that. Let's proceed. So as we are done with the connections for the hardware part let's have a look over the python code we require to interface. So for that log into github.com and here we have to search for the repository that is control everything community. Move forward and here BMG160 is the required sensor we are interested in and here comes the Python code. But before moving to the code, let's have an instruction list first. We have to download and install the Assembus library on the Raspberry Pi. And this link, as you can see on my screen, uh, this is the link which will help us to install step by step all the Assembus libraries. So this is the code commands as you can notice. Please go through it carefully. Now get back to the code and here we go. It's a .py extension file. As you can notice, first of all we have imported two libraries, SMBus and Time and the address of the sensor that is 0x68. Now coming to the writing section part where we have selected the range register that is 0x, 0f and we have sent the command for configuration for full scale range that is 2000 dps plus minus and 0x80 is the command for that. Writing by data is here. Next we have the address of the sensor and we have selected bandwidth or register of the sensor that is 0x10 and the bandwidth we have set here is 200 hertz which goes for 0x04. Writing command is here. Now this is the time.sleep function to provide some delaying so that the sensor can accept what commands are being provided to it. Now next we have the writing reading part which gives uh, 6 bytes of data from 0x02 and all comprises of x, y and z axis of gyroscope data. So we are having a lot of values continuously coming up and here comes the conversion part of these values for x, y and z axis of gyro. Now as we are done with the calculations and other stuff 
we have to display the result on the screen and x-axis, y-axis, z-axis rotation are being displayed according to the right format. Percentage D as you can see raw values are there. So what we do is to look over the working of this sensor with this code. So let's have that. Well here comes the interesting part of the practicality of this code. So for the working first of all copy this entire python code. Copy it and open up the terminal. Here, create a new file with bmg160.py extension file and here paste the entire code and save it. As you can see on my screen and now this is the command to run the code and here we go. We have the results of x, y, z axis of rotation. Now when I try to rotate it and run the command, as you can notice there is a change in x, y and z axis of rotation. Continuously doing so, we are getting the results. So this is how a Python code works. Now let's see what are the features and the benefits and the applications for sensor BMG 160 16-bit gyroscopic sensor. So just now we have seen the working of the sensor BMG 160, the codes and explanation and a lot more for this sensor. The BMG160 is a 3-axis angular rate sensor that is made up of a surface, micro machine sensing element and an evaluation ASIC. The BMG160 is designed to meet requirements for consumer applications such as image stabilization that is DSC and camera phone, gaming, image stabilization, gesture recognition and pointing devices. It is capable to measure angular rates in three perpendicular room dimensions, the x, y and z axis and to provide the corresponding output signals. Now this sensor is available and can be purchased from this very site that is controleverything.com and you can have the code from the resource tab and after that you can download it. Now you can have also the code from github.com and the repository there is control everything community. Now as I just want to make sure that in case if you want to understand any part of this video or any issue, you can check me or you put your queries on controleverything.com and you can post any comments on the community page of this website. Now for articles and blog like this, you can check me on instructivus.com and to pursue more videos like this, you can subscribe our YouTube channel. I hope you are doing well and you like this video and have a good one of yourself. Thanks a lot for the watching. Goodbye.